Good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to do a preview of two big fighting knives that I've made. And we're going to take a short uh, journey through what they're made of, how they were made, and just get you some up close details and dimensions on them. There we go. Right, so I've dubbed these dueling bowies. As you can see, <clears throat> they've got <clears throat> dog bone handles. Dog bone refers to the shape of the handle, which obviously resembles a uh, dog bone of sorts. And uh, yeah, so the sheath is what we call a frog style sheath. Uh, I've done some Indian style designs, like the Indian sun that you might see there. I don't know about the angle there. And on this one, a variation on the theme, also with some geometric patterns and the little sun logo there and uh, these are the frog style sheath you can remove all right like that and then that will wear on your belt and this you can put down when you want to sit or uh, uh, before you engage in your deadly duel this is a frog button you can also take this and slide it into your belt and this will prevent it from sliding out from underneath your belt the knife itself is forged from uh, 1070, no not 10, 1070, excuse me, it's 01 tool steel and K600 high nickel carbon steel uh, to create the contrasting layers. It's been edge patterned which means I only grind on the edge of the knife to create the, uh, the ripple pattern that you see there. You're looking at about 8mm thick at the spine, about 45mm wide and I'm not sure in millimeters, but I know this is a 13 inch long blade. So I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm going to back up a little bit. All the fittings are forged from 150 year old wrought iron. You can see the, let me see if I can do it in there. You see the, the patterns. I'm not sure if it's focusing, but we'll have a look just now. So you can see the patterns with a tool steel spacer. The reason it looks a little dirty is that I've waxed these thoroughly. Unfortunately, iron is very porous and has a tendency to rust at the drop of a hat. The handle scales are elephant ivory, pre-ban, unfortunately no certification, but I can't sell something like this outside of South Africa. The pins are custom made individually, nickel silver, hand domed, hand drawn um, silver rod to rivet, rivet over and rivet it all together. This is what we call a frame tang. You can see it almost looks like a full tang. It goes all the way around there and the other side. What in fact you're seeing is the tang goes inside, fits inside the frame like that. And uh, the frame sits on the outside and these rivets are now drilled through the frame. And there's one rivet at the end that pins it to the tang. So yeah, so that's the one knife. And we'll get the other one out as well. Well, let's just put it away first. into its sheath, into its mounting, and then its sister, also remove it from the mounting, there it is, nice, you can see the stitching at the back, it's all wet molded, basically you take the leather, you mold it around the blade, and it uh, takes the form of the knife, the exact shape, and you pinch it together, and you mark the holes, make sure you've got the same number of holes down one side as the other side. And then while it's on the blade, you stitch it. Make sure you wrap your blade with something like uh, cling film or paper, so that when you remove it, the sheath is just slightly bigger than the, the knife itself. If it's exactly the same size, you're going to struggle to get the knife in. So we pull that one out. This one is uh, almost exactly the same. There are a few subtle differences. No two knives are ever the same. It's got a slightly coarser pattern than the other one. You can see here, the ripples here. This is what we call a heartbeat, or sometimes, depending on the, uh, the angle, it could also be called a hound's tooth pattern. You can see the wrought iron fittings. On these, I've got my uh, special 10-year logo. Indicate that I've been making knives full-time for 10 years. And on the other side, you can see the logo for the Knife Makers Guild of Southern Africa, of which I'm a member. This one has the same handle construction as the other. 
Again, looking a little dirty, it's just that wax to try and preserve everything. You can use oil, but the oil tends to rub off very easily. The wax, the wax gets dirty, but the handle stays clean. So there you go. So let's take them both out together and have a look at them. You can have a look at them as I said. Very, very, very cool. You definitely feel like a rock star when you hold them both together. So, two knives together, you get an idea of the size. These are pretty big Bowie knives. And I uh, really, really like them, and I'll be sorry to see them go. So, there you go. One. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my review of my two dueling bowies. I'm quite chuffed with those. Thank you very much and uh, goodbye.